They say April showers bring May flowers. And if you look around the Pennsylvania area where we're at, there's flowers everywhere. Things are really blooming. Welcome to Hope Today. We're going to find out about blooming ourselves. I'm Tom Hollis, and this is Anna Schmidt. Anna, uh, tell me, tell us about that. Yeah, well, I was wondering if you feel like you're a wallflower that maybe needs to bloom. As children, some are labeled shy, quiet, awkward, or simply different. These descriptors confine us to the sidelines, rendering our voices faint and our presence unnoticed. Well, our guest today, Callie Logan, joins us in just a few minutes. She says that within the depths of our being lies a multitude of stories to be shared, perspectives to be offered, and reflections to be pondered. If you carry labels and mindsets that hold you back from God's best, this conversation is for you. And Tom, I know you can relate to this. I can. I, I, I remember, and we were talking about this a little bit before, is growing up that way, growing up very kind of shy, wallflower kind of in the background. And, and the Lord kind of changed, not that there's anything wrong with being an introvert, there's nothing wrong with that, but the Lord just had, he had other things for me and he kind of took me out of my shell. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be such an important conversation to just help us truly live into the fullness of who God made us to be is because we get we get a little bit uh, fearful sometimes to step out and oh, yeah. do what he's oh, called us totally, to do. Totally, <laughs> totally. But when you step out, you see great things happen. So as you watch the program today, you're gonna learn how to heal from those words that have hurt us in the past and experience the full potential that God has for you. We're also going to be learning about a special event featuring former Pittsburgh Steelers, go Steelers, that's for a good cause. You're going to want to hear about that as well. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Callie Logan is a millennial who is impacting the world for Christ by challenging women to develop deeper relationships with God and to live fearlessly and authentically. In her new book, The Wallflower That Bloomed, Callie writes about finding your place at the lunch table of life. If you carry a label of being shy, quiet, awkward, or simply different, this conversation will inspire you to live into the incredible, authentic person God made you to be. So Callie, welcome to Hope Today. Hi, good morning, thank you. It's so good to have you back with us. And I think this is such an incredible, important conversation. We want to start off by hearing some of your own personal story. You share in your book about a time that you were at the lunch table when you were 15 years old. Tell us all about that. Yeah, you know, I wasn't quite sure how to start the book exactly, but I thought a great perspective would be to help the audience know that they can trust the author, that the author has perhaps been where they've been before. And so we all enjoy movies like Clueless or Mean Girls because many of us can relate to those lunch table interactions back in high school. And I think even as adults, we still find ourselves in those situations at times. And so I shared when I was 15, just a typical day where I was that wallflower. I was that shy kid who would get bullied a lot and I wasn't quite confident who I was. I didn't actually really fully know who I was or who I really belonged to. I was still figuring out my way and getting to know God. And so I decided to start the book off there so that hopefully the audience can know, hey, if you've ever felt any of these things, you've got a seat at this table. And so these at that time, you were experiencing a lot of hurtful words that you internalized, as many of us do. How did you begin to heal from those? Because now you're in your 30s. What has that journey looked like for you? It's been a really interesting journey, and a lot of it, I, I can't take any credit myself. Like, I had some eureka moment one day. It was really the kind refinement given by the Lord through relationship with Him. And... Uh, one particular night, I, I mentioned in the book, I was beating myself up, just silly, trying to, this was in my mid-20s, saying, why can't I just be more outgoing? Why can't I be different? And the Lord very softly in a gentle voice said, I made you to be quiet. And that was such a gift to me. And I started to begin to see that some of the words that people had used to hurt me could be reframed and they could actually be a good thing or a beneficial thing in my life. And it didn't have to be something that even I had a stigma against. Can you share examples of how you began to reframe that 
so that it was empowering instead of limiting? Uh, I would love to. I, I began to take some of those words, like the quiet word, and seeing that, you know, for me at that time, that looked like such a bad thing. I thought it was bad that I was quiet, that I, I wasn't more outgoing, and I felt like I was disappointing my friends around me or anything else. And instead, I took it to the Lord and I said, well, why is it good that I'm quiet? Why did you make me to be quiet? And he offered to me that when I do speak, then people will listen because I have something important to say. I'm not just always babbling on about something. And so I began to look at other words that people had used or I had used against myself that I had looked at that were bad. And I took them, you know, you take them to the word of God. What does God say of me? And then you go through holy relationship and prayer and say, God, why did you make me to be this way? Is this something you want to stay in me or, or do you want to refine that? Do you want to change that a little bit? Or how can I look at that? But that's a good thing because I know you don't make mistakes. Kelly, you know, I identify so much with what you're, you're talking about as I alluded to in our open. Um, you know, what is it about, you know, God, God got me to my authentic self, kind of taking me out of like the George McFly kind of personality into, into one that uh, was really where he wanted me to be. Not that, it, not that it changed so much, it just seemed to take off the fear and take off those things that were limiting me. Has that been your experience that we have to take off some artificial things to get to that authentic person? Oh, for sure. I think that's one of the biggest things. It's looking at things that other people have said of you or that you've said of yourself, or maybe you've seen a society that are not so good. And it's saying, is this really me or is this a mask that I'm wearing? Because I don't want to wear this mask. I want to present truly who I am. That's how we can impact the kingdom. And that's, I think, what God truly wants for us to be in this world where we're living in the world, but not of it, right? Uh, we don't want to present the world with, with falsehoods and with fake things. The world has plenty of that already. So it's partnering with God and saying, how, who did you make me to be? How can I present my authentic self? Not just for the benefit of me, but ultimately the benefit of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So can you share a little bit more about what it looks like to be authentic? And maybe it even helps to give a, a story or comparison of when you weren't being authentic versus when you were living into that? It's definitely a journey, that's for sure. And I, I think back to just, again, those early 20s when I would try and kind of fit myself into different friends groups or I found myself in different situations. And so I would, I remember one particular, I would try and dress like everybody around me, like, oh, well, you know, maybe they'll like me a little bit more or I'll fit in, I'll feel more comfortable if I, if I dress like them and, and I have similar hobbies. And I just remember feeling so facetious I felt so uncomfortable in this fake skin that I was wearing. And so one day I just was like, you know, I don't, I don't like this. And, and I just decided to give some of those items to Goodwill because I just felt so fake. And I, I realized, you know, it definitely, you know, even just in personality wise, getting, you know, presenting more of my true self, I think it made the other people around me not quite feel as connected to me, but it was part of the evolution of realizing, I don't think these are my people. And that was a good journey of not saying that there was anything wrong with them. I just, they weren't my people. And that actually led me to ask God, could you give me friends and a community that you have for me instead of the one that I've just been trying so hard to make work? Kelly, as you've shared your story and what God has shown you about this, this entire subject, what, what has been the response? How have people responded to that? Have you had a lot of people identifying like I, I do with what you're saying? And what's been the, uh, the, the what is the, the work that the Lord's begun to do in their lives? It's been amazing to see, and it's honestly been just such a humbling blessing to get to be a part of that story for them. I think seeing it as a breath of, breath of fresh air, and it doesn't really matter the age, too. I think that's been one of the most astounding things. I've seen people identify with this work, and, and they're well into their 60s and 70s, and, and they've kind of been waiting for something like this, or perhaps more, you know, people in their 30s like me, or, or even people in their 20s. And it's been neat to see almost like this 
ticket that says you are allowed to be the real you. You are allowed to be the person that God made you to be. And you see that allowance, but you also see this curiosity that they want to know more. They want to dive deeper. And that's been a really neat thing to witness in other people. And then to have them come back to you and share even just small facets of, okay, I'm really excited. I started doing this. I started getting more into my hobby or, you know, this, that, and the other. And I just, I feel so free. I feel so happy. And you see the exterior of their life. It's not like they got, they won lotto or they got some new job or, you know, this amazing new relationship, but instead they're just really excited to be the person that they were born to be. I love this conversation so much and there are parts of it that I can certainly relate to as well. And so there was a time in my life where I dug into my identity in Christ because a lot of us are walking around like, who are we anyway? Are we who our friends say we are, who other people say we are, like uh, what culture says, but can you share a little bit about what you have learned, what the Bible says about our identity, who we authentically are in Christ? I'd love to. It's amazing when you really get into the word and you start applying it to your own life, not just of stories that have happened to other people that came before you, or not just looking at it. Well, that's true for other people, but not for me. But when you really start adopting and seeing, I was made by you, God. I am not, my form was not hidden from you, that I am chosen, that I am lovely, that I am beautiful. These, these things that you say that I am, and when you start to actually root in those beliefs, it, it doesn't provide this pride in the way of arrogance, but instead it's this healthy confidence that even if the world rejects you, and you should actually expect that because he says that, that you're not rejected by him and that you are safe and you are rooted and you are found in him. And I think that real identity comes into just having that real, authentic, safe relationship that is completely based in him. He also said part of that, our identity is that we are chosen by him. Because how often do we walk around thinking like, who am I? What do I have that people would want to even hear? And yet God has put us on this earth to, for it to not be just about us, like, but to be about a bigger purpose, which is his story. And so share a little bit about how people can practically begin to step into to blooming and not be that wallflower anymore. Yeah, I think a lot of that is looking that even if you continue to be that wallflower, it's okay and you can still genuinely bloom, that you can bloom exactly where you are, the person that you were made to be, and that it comes into, first and foremost, having that deeper connection and relationship with God. He made you, so he knows you better than anybody, and he knows you better than you think you know yourself, too. <laughs> and, and then it's putting practical things into practice. So it's maybe speaking to yourself in a different light and being kinder at the words that you use for yourself when you're looking in the mirror. I think it comes into changing maybe the environment around you. You don't have to have some reality show budget to change your, your house a little bit and your living environment or the clothes that you wear. And it's really looking at, are the people around me lifting me up? Are they making me a better me? Or is this maybe not the best environment for me as well? And so it's a, this is not a book that you read it once in an afternoon and you put it down and you never think about it again. It's, it's meant to challenge you. It's meant to encourage you. It's meant to help you really consider all the facets of your life. And are they in alignment with what God really wants for you? So I think the blooming process, you know, we were talking before the show that you um, be getting into gardening. You know, it's not it's not a swift thing. It's not an overnight process. But once you have those blooms and, and you get to experience that, I think that's one of the best parts of life. And when we look at ourselves in that way, we really get to stand confident and say, God, thank you so much for the person that you dreamed me to be. And then I get to partner with you to really be that person. And now I get to go out and serve you and serve others and, and to bless this world and bless the kingdom as, as me. Right. 
Oh, that's so good. I love the analogy too of the blooming flowers because many of us are right now planting flowers. We tend to them every day with water and fertilizer and just like we do that with the physical, spiritually, when we water ourselves with God's word and sit in his presence, that it helps us bloom more and more every day and be the beautiful people in this earth. So Callie, you are truly beautiful. We just appreciate you so much. Your book again is The Wallflower That Bloomed, Finding Your Place at the Lunch Table of Life. Thank you so much for being back with us today. Thank you. It was a joy. What a great conversation and an important one. And I think one that we can all identify with. Well, when we return in 60 seconds, you're going to learn about an upcoming incredible event featuring some popular former Pittsburgh Steelers taking the field again. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God. But they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Coming to Akershore Stadium in Pittsburgh on May 21st is a special event for a great cause. It's the inaugural 2024 Resilience Bowl, and it's being hosted by someone you've probably heard of. You may be quite familiar with former Steeler Troy Palomalu. He, along with his wife Theodora, are hosting this incredible event. And joining us now to share more about it is the founder and CEO of Neighborhood Resilience Project, Father Paul Abernathy. Welcome to Hope Today. Tom, thank you. Good to be with you. You got to tell me about this. You got Troy Palomalu on board. What, what is the Resilience Bowl? Well, the Resilience Bowl, it's a fundraiser slash community event for the Neighborhood Resilience Project which is a local nonprofit here, a faith-based Christian, Orthodox Christian nonprofit in the city of Pittsburgh, has a long history with the Palomalos. In uh, a f uh, about 18 months ago, uh, Troy, Theodora, myself, we started talking about how could we have an event. We, we, we thought about a lot of organizations were having fundraising events, and that was certainly a, uh, an objective, but we started to think more broadly about how important it was to bring community together. We think about what, what does it take to heal community, and as Christians, where should we be in building community? And so uh, this idea of a celebrity flag football match uh, that could really be a cornerstone <laughs> event where we pull people from the region together to build community in the region. Well, I have to tell you, when you said celebrity, I looked at the list. It, it's unbelievable. We need to have you working here, Father Paul, and schedule people for us. You got Troy, Ben Roethlisberger, James Harrison, Ike Taylor, Damar Hamlin, Byron Levin, Jerome Bettis, Heinz yeah. Ward. And then you've got like Wiz Khalifa, Kurt Angle, uh, Bill Gardell, just some of the names. How'd you get all those people? Well, you know, this is, this is Troy, and I think it speaks so much to how widely respected he is. And it's important, I think, for us to understand that, uh, that he, is, he, is a, he is a man of devout Christian faith. He and his wife, Theodore, they are devout Orthodox Christians. And, and I really believe that people are drawn to Christ in them. Mm -hmm. And whenever they extend this opportunity, it's, it's, a, a, it's something that, uh, not only out of respect for them, but it's just the warmth that the Palomolos give, which is ultimately the warmth of Christ, mm -hmm. is just drawing these big names to this event. And we're very excited about that. Yeah, for all of us Steeler fans, yeah, all right. of us that watch him and you see him so wild on the field and he's so soft-spoken. So soft-spoken. Uh, it's just wonderful. What is the mission? You shared a little bit about it. Could you go into a little bit more about the mission of the Resilience Project? 
the Neighborhood Resilience Project, the mission is, uh, you know, it's an Orthodox Christian organization inspired, it, it's rooted in the gospel and teachings of the Orthodox Church, inspired by the Civil Rights Movement, and the mission is to support the transformation of trauma-affected communities to resilient, healing, and healthy communities. And we have to understand that many of our communities are inundated with trauma. They're inundated with suffering. We start thinking about as Christians, as the church, what does that mean for us in this particular context? I've spent a lot of time with mothers who've lost their sons to gun violence, with people who uh, have been living in, in poverty for many generations, uh, people who have suffered suffering from addictions, et cetera, et cetera. And, and sometimes we find that entire communities are, are living with this kind of trauma, not just for one generation, for many generations. Mm -hmm. And so for us, the mission of the Neighborhood Resilience Project is is to support that healing transformation that we know with God is possible. And of course, we have, we have everything from feeding programs uh, to helping with people with lights, gas, and rent. We have a free health center that gives free health care to the uninsured and underinsured. We have block level interventions where we revitalize whole corners of the neighborhood. We have a trauma response team that responds to homicides as a result of gun violence, and we're working with community health workers and community health deputies in some neighborhoods to reduce the death gap, neighborhoods where we have a lower life expectancy mm -hmm. than other neighborhoods in Allegheny County. And of course, we now have been privileged to do a lot of training uh, with people who are looking at addressing these kinds of issues in their communities. And it is for us very much a missionary work in that regard as well. You know, you said to me uh, off air that, you know, you're a Rocky War veteran and the PTSD that you've seen there, you've seen it in the cities. You've seen it in, in the neighborhoods. It's you, incredible to think about. It was so shocking to me. And, and I, had, sir, I had crossed into Iraq the very first day of the ground war with the Army's 3rd Infantry Division. And I spent a year uh, serving in Iraq. And when I came home, went to seminary, started my ministry, this very shocking moment where I came to realize I was seeing so much more post-traumatic stress disorder in my own community than I ever saw when I was in the Army, and, and that, that disturbed me a great deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. We'll have a link uh, to uh, the Resilience Bowl on ctvn.org. Father Paul, thank you, and uh, thank everyone that's involved. It's gonna be a great event. Uh, up. It's going to be awesome to just see these guys out there uh, <laughs> yeah. flying around uh, kind of a little older with some <laughs> yeah, aches and right. pains, right? My some first time hair. playing at Acrisure Stadium for a lot of these guys. Acrisure <laughs> Stadium. Oh, Stadium. that's right. That's yeah. right. Well, thank you so much for being oh, with thank us Thank you. I really love the word resilience. It's a, a word that I have looked at quite a bit over the past five or six years of my life where I really did have to practice to strengthen the muscle of resilience and the the fun fact the exciting thing is is that we all have resilience in us and Tom it is something just like we talked with Callie about at the beginning of the show that we have been through hurtful things in our past we may wear these labels that keep us living a small life but to to practice getting stronger and having the confidence of Christ helps us mm -hmm. grow into who he made us to be well and, and Callie talked about being bullied and how that puts labels on you and I was bullied too in middle school mostly and, and the, sometimes you wear those labels or you, you become even more insecure perhaps. But God begins to mature us and to grow us. And, and, and sometimes it takes a step on our part too. I was sharing with Anna in the break that I had a job uh, ministry where I was mentoring young people. Well, if you're going to mentor somebody, you got to talk to them, right? <laughs> so I had to break through what barriers had been put on me to be my authentic self to those people. I had to force myself to sit down beside people and talk to them, which was not my natural thing that I wanted to do. But as you take a few steps, and God empowers you to take those steps, and he begins, to, those walls begin to break down. God says, you know, he's drawing us. He's drawing us, go ahead and sit down, go ahead and talk. And as he begins to draw those things out of us, he empowers us even more to be who we authentically are. Right, he definitely does. And I, I wish that this could be a small group conversation and have you sitting right here with us or have us right there in your living room because each one of us have a story of 
things that have held us back. And I was very shy in elementary school and then I too was bullied through middle school and through high school is when I started to, to bloom into who I authentically was, but it really wasn't until I until I studied my identity in Christ and understood like what God says about me. It doesn't matter what is being said about me in the world. It matters what God says because that's what's true. And then fear was something that held me back for so many years, even being able to be right here with you on television. Like, what a terrifying <laughs> thing. Isn't that, you know what, I, I, I always say that. I say, isn't it funny about, it's just like God, take the, one of the shyest guys in the school and says, you know what I'm gonna do with him? I'm gonna put him on television. It's like the, the, the furthest thing from my mind. And, and you know, it's not something that I went looking for. It's that God has his plans and purposes. And when we just say, God, yes, he says, okay, okay, I'm gonna give you the power. I'm gonna give you the strength. I'm gonna heal you from those hurts, like we talked about, and from those labels and those words that people have spoken over you. And here's the words I'm gonna speak over you. You are mine, you are strong, you are able, you're able to do this. Yeah, I just wonder what's stirring in your heart today, because the truth is, is that God has put passions and desires in your heart to do something that is bigger than yourself, which is really what those stirrings are, is what he has for you to step into during your years on this earth. And so if you have been sensing a stirring from the Holy Spirit to step out and try serving in a certain area or to invite somebody over to your house even, or, um, just try something new, but fear has been holding you back. My encouragement today is you just talk right back to that fear and tell that fear who God made you to be, that he has chosen you to be his ambassador, that it is his blood that runs through your veins. It is the mind of Christ that you have, and it is the Holy Spirit that is living in you to empower you to go out and be extraordinary for Christ. We may be this ordinary shell, but we have an extraordinary God living inside of us. Friend, don't just step back into the background. You do have stories, perspective, words that this world needs to hear. Let your beautiful self bloom into who God made you to be. And we want you to always know that we're here to encourage you, to pray for you. Our prayer line number is 888-665-4483. We love you so much. It is so good to be part of the CTVN family and to constantly be growing in the Lord. We love you. We just pray that you have a great day.